I now call to order the New Carlisle City Council meeting, Thursday, August 23rd, 2018 at 7 p.m. Mrs. Burke. Mayor Reynolds. Here. Mr. Lowry. Here. Mr. Shami. Here. Mr. Cobb. Here. Cook. Here. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Here. Six members present. All right. Our invocation will be done tonight by Vice Mayor Bill Lindsay. If you don't mind standing. Heavenly Father, Lord, we ask you once again to give us guidance in the decisions we make for the city of this town. Father, we ask you to protect all of our service people, our firefighters, and our police officers. We ask you to put your blessings upon everyone in this room tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We're going to do our pledge flag of front time. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Action on the minutes. There are none. Communication <laughs> City managers report tonight. There is none. Comments from members of the public. Please limit comments to five minutes or less. Mrs. Craybacher, if you don't mind giving your name and address just for the record. Thank you. Pat Craybacher, 307 North Henry Street. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Vice Mayor, Council, City Manager, I, I appreciate having a few remarks to make about the nominees. I'm thrilled that there will be a woman on council, but I commend that person that you select. Um, what we need is a clear thinking, someone who's been participating in the city life, and someone who is able to be a peacemaker. And that's my word for you members of council currently. We have seen uh, a lot of hijinks and a lot of other what I call unprofessional um, behavior, and I would challenge you to look at yourselves and to make sure that your behavior is above reproach, that you are honest and trustworthy, that you are at least representing the interests of citizens in New Carlisle, because we love this little town, but some of us are getting pretty frustrated with what's been happening, and I just commend you to uh, be compassionate for each other as members, to welcome the new councilwoman to council. And I will tell you, my work as a humanitarian in Nigeria, where there's great struggle, great strife, the data shows repeatedly that women are the peacemakers in the world. And so we need the men to be part of that too, if we're going to have a council that's really effective and representing the interests of this city. So I challenge you to be peacemakers. Thank you, Ms. Craybacher. Any other comments from members of the public? <clears throat> you don't mind giving your name and address, please. My name is Matthew Mills. I'll be fully upfront. I was a former member, resident of New Carlisle. I moved back in April. I paid city taxes, so I still feel the need or the right to say something this one final time before I ride away into the sunset. Um, I'm here for two reasons tonight. One, on this council member aspect. Um, you know, there's already a huge controversy in this town several times for the past six months. Now there's another one regarding application and the proper filing of them. Um, I don't know the other two applicants, and I don't mean ill when I say this, but it's my opinion that if proper paperwork is not filled out, that it should be discarded. That's, that's just common sense to my mind. And I apologize if I've been the, the person who applied and did not fill out the proper paperwork, but that should be considered. Um, second, I've come here to support um, Becky McKenzie as the uh, current, uh, one of the applicants to get the current position. She applied a couple months ago, um, and I think that she would be great for the job. If I were still a resident, and if I could still vote here, if she were running, I would vote for her. I'd actually like to bring up a quote from the uh, New Carlisle News back in February, I believe. It says, Becky, I really, really hope that you run in two years, said Reynolds. I think you'll be a fantastic councilwoman when you win in two years. That's an endorsement to me. Um, also, I think that uh, I'm pretty far right spectrum. Um, I, I debated whether I should say this or not, but Becky and I probably agree about this much on political issues. 
I'd vote for her in a second for this position. She's the best person, best lady for the job, best person for the job. She's a young woman with a family, and I don't see anybody on this council who's a young lady with children. This council needs that. This council, this town needs somebody with that mindset. This council should consider that when they vote. Second. This council needs to learn to behave. Quit calling each other out on social media. Two days ago, and it's it needs to stop. Apparently it was bad enough that somebody deleted their post. Personal attacks on each other. I could go on. It's not gonna do anything. It needs to stop. Thank you. Any other? <laughs> Sorry, Tim. I've been cold. I've been trying to fight. Any other comments from members of the public? Mrs. Biden, if you mind saying your name and address, please. Uh, Judy Bible, 806 White Pine Street, New Carlisle. Um, I also am here to support Becky. I read all the applications and resumes, and she is the only one who mentioned any type of plan or vision for what she wants New Carlisle to be. And she has been at every meeting I've been to, and the meetings I don't make it to and watch, she's always here. She always participates, she gives her opinions, she works for the city on the, what is it, the garden? The Parks and Rec. Thank Park. you. Uh, <laughs> board. Uh, and quite frankly, to my knowledge, I've not seen any of the other two candidates at any council meeting. So the person who is already putting in the time and effort to participate, I feel that right there should give her a bonus towards getting the position. Any other comments from members of the public? There are none. Mrs. Burner. <laughs> no. Where are we going? Mr. Lara. Um, I just didn't know if I was able to add some comments to your oh, comments. Yes, go ahead. Okay. Feel free. Thank you. Uh, just on some of your guys' comments in general, <coughs> Mr. Mills and what you spoke of the other day, and I'd actually just spoke to Mayor Reynolds outside the uh, shelter house about you know some of the things that were said on social media, um, you know, and, and you know hard conversations between the two of us. Um, my, you know, my big issue isn't if anybody read it is you know I, I believe that you know it, it, just like we've said in other meetings that it's not a law that, that you had to put in the application by our charter. There's no law that says they have to put in the application, but the, the Attorney also did say that you do have the option since there is no law. You, since you did put it in the post on the, in the newspaper on the job post, you still are able to follow that direction in which you were, you know, give for the job posting. So basically, it's, you know, the ball is in our court whether we want to accept it or deny that application. Um, I think the the individual or candidate in, in question, as far as the new application, I mean, their application is great. I mean, I, I've talked. In, She would probably be a really good candidate, but I just I firmly believe, me personally as a councilman, that if you know if, if you see a job posting for whether it's council or, or to work at the restaurant that, that Mr. Shammy runs, uh, anything, if it says application, you need to fill it out. I mean, it's just I think that's the that's the fairest way to do it. Um, you know, to me, there's no way around it. I mean, you can say legally you don't have to have it, but I think out of good faith that those who did do what was asked of them. That's where I stand on it. So that being said, I'd like to make a motion to reject Mrs. Hopkins' resume as her application for city council. Is there a second? Second. Mr.
council member to fill the vacancy for former council Aaron Lighty. <coughs> sorry, Aaron Lighty's seat. The, no, you can make your nominations or your motions to nominate. Yes, Mr. Mom. All right. I'd like to uh, make a nomination for Becky McKenzie. Is there a second? I'll second it. Mr. Cook. Any other nominations on the floor? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lindsay. I nominate Amy Hopkins. Is there a second? Second. Does anyone have anything to say on the oh, this, to me the motion to close nominations? Move to close nominations. So you can't nominate Mrs. Hopkins. The motion's dead. That's the end of the weather. What are you talking about? According to Robert Trolls of Order. Well, you've got a tie vote. Once that motion has been made and been voted on, you have a tie. Her application is dead. Her resume is dead. No, sir. No, no sir. Yes, sir. To set motion. motion yes. The motion is dead. The motion was to not accept it. The council did not vote in a majority in fashion to, to reject it. it. When it becomes a tie it, vote. It doesn't pass, so it fails. She's out of the equation. That is not the case, sir. According to Robert Rose Porter, she is. I know Robert's rules forward and backwards. I know that is not the case. But thank you. Your concerns are noted. Anyone have a motion to close nominations? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All right. Nominations are now closed. Anyone have anything to discuss on either of the candidates for Mrs. McKenzie or Mrs. Amy Hopkins?
you say as a council member, us as a group, I should even say Mr. Mayor, I must say us as a group. Uh, with the amount of people that did come tonight on such a, I would say like a soft meeting, it's not a big meeting in comparison to some of the things we've done, that we should follow the advice that we were given from the voters who put us in place? Yes. Depending, for me, it's about what's legal and what's not, it's about legal and right, not what's fair. Because what the law director said. It's not about what's, it's about what's legal to me, and I support the most qualified candidate, in my opinion. Do we, do, do you and I agree, though, that the law director didn't say that it is perfectly legal for us to, yes, accept it, or we could also deny it, if we wish, because it was put in there. If council wanted to deny it, they, you would have that right to do so. But I'm saying it was legal in her. She said that it was legal for us to remove any candidate we chose not to like. I mean, is what how, how I read it. Okay. So. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Council, any other comments? Mr. Cook? Again, this is one of the biggest shams I've seen out of this council in a long, long time. Thank you. you two gentlemen will not accept the blame for the fact of your responsible actions a while back. Now you are bringing it forth again. Mrs. Hopkins, are you okay? I almost think I should be allowed to speak on my behalf since there's been so many things said about me and so many things people don't know. And uh, I didn't want to cause any more conflict on this council than there was. Mrs. Hopkins, I can assure you this is not about you, not about your resume. It's about the way the game is played. And this is a very dirty political game. But see, what's so confusing to me is I applied before and I wasn't elected, and I applied the same way with my resume. Nobody said a word. I didn't know it was wrong. I put in my resume this time. I went to the person at the window and told her I wanted to apply. And she said, okay, she took my resume and never said anything about an application. I thought I could apply the same way I did. I have no reason why not to fill out an application. Again, this is, this is not about you. you I, I, well, there's one other thing, too. I think not we can bring supporters. I have a lot of people that are voters in New Carlisle that would have support, supported me. I could have filled up this room. I've been a resident for 41 years, and I've been very active in the community. I haven't been publicly yelling at people or on Facebook, but I've been active in fun, uh, fun drives, food drives, the festivals, the different things. So that's the only thing. Uh, well, I the people here if I knew that. I'm going to say this. It's because of what goes on in the background that you don't know about. And consequently, there's been a lot of byplay about who was going to be elected to this position, and we knew coming in here tonight <coughs> what was going to happen. I'd have bet you a million dollars to one 
of what was going to happen, and I'll guarantee you what will happen tomorrow morning. Let's see, sitting here, I see that the cards were stacked for bed. No, she has. She has. Thank you, guys, guys, guys. We'll, 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 have, we'll get to you in a second, Ms. We'll give she you the last 30 seconds here. here. Everybody was talking about her, and people are talking about the other candidates and they don't know. Um, I don't know how they don't know me since I've sold the real estate for 25 years here and been so active, but it doesn't matter. The biggest thing was I thought what I did was correct and I thought the last council meeting we voted for my application for me to be dis disqualified um, instead of putting me because this is very nerve-wracking and then say I'm not qualified. All right, now we're going to get to Mr. McKenzie. We'll give you five minutes as well. So. Well, my first point is that at the last nomination, you specifically said that you would not break the tie or be the tie. You said that you would vote as the majority did on council, and again, you are not doing that. Every time someone brings something to you and calls you out on anything, you have an excuse or a reason for not doing what you're supposed to do. And I don't understand it. So either you were lying then, or you're just doing what you want to when you want to. Right, you. I would like to know what the reasoning was, actually. That's, that is a specific question for you. I voted for the most qualified No, that's candidate. not what that's, you said. That is exactly, that this is where I'm at. Words. This is at the last appointment, you said you could not break the tie or be the tie, that you had to vote with the majority. That's what you felt was right. And what are you doing I voted today? for the most qualified candidate. No, that's not what you said. Mrs. McKenzie, okay. that is where I'm at. Right. Thank you. Mr. Cobb. Excuse me. Mr. Burr. Mr. Cobb. You have contacted me this week. <coughs> yes, I did. I did. I did. And the discussion come up about Mrs. McKenzie. Yes, you asked me the question. Pardon? After you asked me the question, yes. Okay. You, you, you called her a crybaby. You're upset with her because she circled, started a petition, recall petition on you, and you was more or less disappointed in it. And the vice mayor has done the same thing, contacted me and the same thing. And you've also said you're upset with Mr. Cook for advising Mrs. McKenzie to circulate the recall petition. Now, I mean, you know, by the John Houston's office, a resume is not the same as an application. There's two different things there. But like it comes down, you're going to have the final say. And I just think, you know, pardon? He's not going to be in party. Chances, you're right. But I have to say that, and that's just what's been brought up. If it causes enemies between us, so it does. I'm here to represent the citizens. Thank you, Rob. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I'll give you about two more minutes. Gotcha. Go ahead. Um, just one more thing. You don't have to be upset with anybody for certain <coughs> I did that in my own free will. No one directed me to do that. That was my... Tells me and Brandy because we know and feel what you did was wrong, and me too, Bill. So you'll continue to do what you do, and I will continue to come to meetings, and I'll continue to speak, and then I'll win next year. Right. Thank you. You're welcome. Council, any other comments, questions, or concerns? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lowry. Uh, Ms. Hopkins, um, <laughs> I apologize, you do have to sit through this. I mean, it's, it's unfortunate, but it is what it is. Uh, for me personally, I, I, I please hope you understand, I'm not questioning any of your, your uh, abilities or anything on your resume. I mean, it was, it was a great resume. For me, once again, it just boiled down to black and white, literally on a newspaper that said, you must turn in a resume. I mean, there are applications, thank you, sorry. Uh, but uh, I mean, that's really what it is for me. I mean, I actually had spoken to uh, the past uh, councilman the other day, Mighty, and he asked what I thought of everybody. And I, I swear on my kids, and I said, 
I tell you what, she has a very impressive resume, and I think she'd probably make a really good candidate. I don't know her councilwoman. I don't know her well, I said, but uh, uh, but with that being said, uh, Mr. Cobb, um, if what you were saying is true as far as either one of the mayor or vice mayor saying that they wouldn't support Becky because she went for a um, a recall petition, I understand that's that's you know it's not fun to go through. Um, that's that's a personal reason to not vote for somebody. It's not a reason that is judged on behalf of the city. Uh, you know, so I, I think if that is a reason, and if that is true, that, you know, I'm just going off what he just said. If you're saying you wouldn't support or vote for somebody for a council seat because they did a recall petition on you, that's it's, it's technically it's irrelevant. It's it's about. You know what's best for the city. Thank you. What's best for the city, and if they put them on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Council, any other comments, questions, or concerns? This is. She had a question. <laughs> Ms. Feinel, sorry. Yeah. Do you mind giving your address? Oh. Your address. For, oh, you already gave it. Sorry. Go ahead. Uh, so, if nobody's like to the position, what happens? Pursuant to the city charter, we'll have to wait 30 days for the deadline to expire. Uh, and then the, according to the charter, the mayor would have seven days after the 30 days to make the appointment. Then if I fail to do that within the seven days, it goes to a special election. Any other comments? Council? Mr. Bowood, you seem... Go ahead. Uh, Dan Warbold, 1014. I got a couple questions here. Uh, Mr. Lighty, or I'm sorry, Mr. Shammy, you run Chewy's. When someone comes in, do they fill out an application? It depends on what for. No, 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 no. When someone comes really? in, you cannot legally hire someone without an application. You cannot. Sir, you I, sir I hire people 50 they go people on, you. We, It's all online. It's all automated. But it still has to be filled out, does it not? Absolutely. Mr. Bridge, when someone comes in to apply for the city of New Corral, do they fill out an application? Yes. Mrs. Hopkins, when someone goes in for a uh, loan, do they fill out an application? Yes, but ask me if when you get hired at Wright State, you have to always fill out an application. That's where I worked and retired, and I submitted my resume. But when you when you interview, do they have you fill out application to get your information? Did you fill out W twos? Did you fill out W fours? Applications are part of this. Mr. Rowan, this isn't. Bush. My name is Rowan Wally. Rowan. All right. My apologies. Mr. I'm just saying. In every part of life, when you apply for something, whether it's a credit card or a job or a city council position, an application is required. End of discussion. It was clearly printed in the ad. The application must be filled out and returned to the city building. That was not fulfilled. It's plain and simple. I have no dog in this fight. I truly don't. You know, I've been asked multiple times to, to apply for this position, and I don't do it because it's just there's no need to. I can get my word out much better than, than squabbling up here with, with seven other gentlemen. But what it boils down to is what's right and wrong. And the right way is following the procedure, following what was in the paper, what was in the ad. What is typical process to apply for a job, a credit card, or anything? A home loan. It's all applications. Not resumes, applications. Not as a salary manager in some places. All you have to do is give your resume. Is this a salary manager reposition? I'm just saying, you're saying all, you're saying, you said it all must fill an application. But, it's not the case in some places where they don't, they accept your resume. But in I'm this saying, case, in this case, when it said application must be filled out, that's the end of the discussion. Right. Black, you just agreed, right, I but see, yet I you see. voted no against it. Our law it. director said it wasn't against the law. It's not against the law. I mean, so, I mean it's not the procedure. It's not procedure. I understand the procedure. Yeah. So maybe we should, as council, create procedures for the future. Mrs. Bayrocker. Craybacher, 307 North Henry Street, New Carlisle. I'm really a 
ashamed of counsel because you seem to want to do only what you want to do, what's best for your careers or your thoughts. You don't follow procedures. You don't care what the citizens have expressed. And you show a blatant disregard for respect for each other in this community. I'm embarrassed. And we need better from our elected officials, Mr. Shammy, Mr. Lowry, Mr. Reynolds, Mr. Lindsay, Mr. Cook, and Mr. Cobb. You guys are the ones that need to make the decisions that are right, proper, just, fair, and equal. And if you can't do that, then you ought to resign your position. Ethan, you and I got in a argument on Facebook recently. Yes, sir. I believe that one of the things that you said was that I should not question your charter of integrity. I think you meant character and integrity. Sounds like we're not going to come to an agreement. You guys are going to, I'm going to come to an agreement tonight about who to appoint. I challenge your character and your integrity as the mayor to let this go to special election. And don't you dare make that appointment. Show a shred of character and integrity and allow that to happen. Any other comments from members of the public? My name is Bobby Moore. I live at 338 Galewood. Now, I don't get to come to city council meetings because I work and I never get to make it. Tonight I busted to get here because I wanted to see this dog and pony show that I watch on YouTube every month. And it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. People that I work with that don't live in New Carlisle watch these videos and laugh and tell me how sad it is that we live in this city, that we have to put up with this. I don't know what your relationship is with this lady. I have no idea who she is. All I know is what I read in her resume. I know Becky. I've known Becky for a long time. I know Kathy. I don't know what. It's, it's going to be the good old boys club and you're bringing her in. Is she your neighbor, your cousin? I don't know, Ethan, but it's sad. You sit up there so smug and everything, it's Ethan's way or the highway. You know what? It's sad. You embarrass our city. I feel sorry for you. I don't know how you sleep at night. Thank you. Any other comments from members of the public? saying this is what I hope for New Carlisle, this is what I would like to work for towards for New Carlisle, they should be the ones that are in contention. Nothing against her, but there was nothing at all in her resume that stated that. It just, I looked at it and thought, well, she's applying for a position in an office somewhere. It's not anything to work towards what she wants New Carlisle to be. And quite frankly, of you. It's really blatantly obvious what's going on. It is. Okay. Council, anything else? Just looking at the Mr. Mayor. Mr. 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 A couple of questions. Yes. Um, are we allowed? Okay, one, I, and Mr. Mills, I was actually thinking of the same thing you were before you mentioned it. Me personally, I, you know, with this much energy into this, you know, I don't know your thoughts on it. If nothing's done tonight, I would, I would love to see it go to the voters. I mean, that would be the most honest and fair way to handle it. I mean, because obviously there's people that don't trust me. There's people that don't trust me. There's people on me on several down the line. Or 100% favorable or popular in the city, but I think that would be the fairest way to, to handle it as far as things being in question, as far as applications or issues on the subject. I don't know if you would consider that. I think it would be an interesting thing to consider in your position. Now, also, are we allowed to 
if, if you wanted to make a motion, I'll just say, it. am I allowed to make another motion, even though we went through it? To vote on the applicants again? Mm -hmm. No, I believe our true state. Let me just find it just to be clear and be safe. Yeah, take your time. Yeah, no motion, resolution, ordinance, or other having been voted upon shall be introduced within 90 days. That's a pass. Sorry. No. One, once a motion's voted on, like gotcha. pass or fail, okay. uh, except with the concurrence of council. And I believe once it's a concurrence of council, I'm going to push that. Sorry. Wouldn't that make the Sorry? Wouldn't that make the nominations move there? Well, make them what? Yeah, we couldn't re-vote on them. Uh, yeah. So it just it just dead. So it's dead. Yeah, okay. The whole issue is now dead. Okay. Can I ask you your thoughts on that idea? On what? On letting it go to voters? Uh, I think that we've done this before where we've had appointments and it's not gone to voters before. Uh, but that's something I'll we'll definitely think about. I, I mean, I'm confused. Yeah, we yeah, we I don't believe we've ever had an appointment that's ever gone before the, the voters. Not to my knowledge, I'm not saying it has well, been. Business is finished. I move we adjourn. Second. Second. We are adjourned.